Greetings, humanoids of the internet. My name is Bob, and we're going to fly some airships. Um, now, a lot of people have been wondering um, uh, uh, where we're going with uh, Journey into Space. Uh, I've not been, been feeling all that inspired to play KSP lately, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, and now, when the next update comes out, I'm sure that will all change because we'll probably have resources and stuff. Uh, but so far, I've been kind of kind of been meh about playing the KSP, uh, and also there's been so many other good things going on, um, the Sim City and uh, especially uh, Planet Explorers. Um, but I haven't forgotten about KSP. I just that I'm not feeling all that inspired to play. But I do like airships, uh, and so I've been uh, uh, inspired to uh, to build an airship. Uh, and uh, the mods we're going to be using today. Uh, the um, airship uh, to other planets mod by Hooligan Labs, Hool Hooligan uh, Hool Hool Hooligan Labs, uh, and also the um, um, uh, Fire Spitter Propeller Plane and Helicopter Parts uh, by uh, SNJO. I'm sorry if I've mangled any of that. Uh, also known as Andreas uh, Actic, and I'm sorry if I man mangled that name. Uh, I've got an airship built. I have not tested it. Um, our goals for the Royal Kerbal Airship Program uh, are to um, uh, have an uh, airship that is stable enough in flight so that I can have Kerbals wandering around on it and uh, not uh, be worried about crashing too quickly. Uh, and um, I've got an airship built, but uh, I have not tested it yet. Uh, this airship is probably going to be really laggy. Um, it may, in fact, crash the, the game to try to put it on the uh, airstrip. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, also, uh, it's almost guaranteed not to be very stable right now. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't done any kind of really adjustments to uh, um, make it uh, balanced at all. So probably this, very, this first trip is going to be very short. I'm not even going to put Kerbals on it uh, until I know that it's, we're going getting somewhere. Um, also, uh, something that, that's often forgotten uh, these days, uh, and... Um, uh, it's part of part of history that I'm I'm very fond of, um, you know. Being an airshipman in the early parts of the 20th century was a really dangerous job. You know, <laughs> those things blew up a lot. Um, I recommend to you the uh, ns11.org we uh, website, uh, the story of the NS11 uh, blimp, uh, and of course everyone knows about the Hindenburg. Um, but uh, also, I would recommend to you um, the 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 uh, history of the Graf Zeppelin which is the world's most successful airship, a regular passenger airship uh, that didn't have any, never had any kind of serious mishaps, never, no kill, no crew or passenger were ever killed. Um, but these people consider themselves to be as much at the forefront of, um, of a new mode of transportation in their day as astronauts do today. Um, and it's sort of a part of our history that um, often gets uh, forgotten. Uh, so, um, uh, but it's a part of history that I uh, myself am very interested in and, and uh, think is very cool and very romantic. Alright, let's without further ado, let's go ahead and load this thing up. Uh, and it's, uh, this airship is designed to be sort of clambered over and crawled over and walked around on, uh, which makes it important that it's actually um, stable. Uh, so we're gonna, probably going to have to do a lot of work on that. What is... What is this? What did I name it? The, the Graf Kerbepolin. And the, um, the game's probably going to have kittens trying to load this thing. And it's probably going to have kittens trying to, to load this thing out on the runway. And it, and it crashed, in fact. Okay, after a few mishaps, so here we have the Graf Kerbepolin. Unfortunately, there's no kind of nose cones for these things to um, make the, the nose all pointy, which is unfortunate, but um, maybe there'll be some at some point, later point. Uh, here we have attachment points for three Kerbals. There's no command pod on there. Um, it's robotically controlled, uh, but the Kerbals can hang on to that, to these things. Um, it has an um, uh, electric-powered uh, motor. Uh, this is the backup motor, because I didn't see a reverser on the in the parts list. Uh, this is a um, backup motor, um, electric motor to pro propel it to while the sun shines. Uh, and there are also, if I can get there, uh, solar panels on the roof. 
Quite a few. Uh, a gasoline um, uh, a gas tank and uh, gasoline powered propellers for uh, when the um, uh, solar panels are not collecting energy. Uh, and as you can see, it's kind of designed to be climbed over quite a, to, to quite a degree. There's a ladder here onto this very precarious uh, catwalk so that if the tires blow out, a uh, guy can go over there and uh, try to fix them or the butt rudder doesn't work. Uh, there's also a rather precarious ladder up to the top of the airship. Yeah, that's, that's going to be yes. Some 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 Kerbal is going to die doing that, but assuming we ever get it launched. Um, uh, but uh, I was sort of um, uh, inspired to do some something on long lines of the um, uh, sort of earlier uh, sort of open car airships um, and blips, and so that's what we have here. I'm going to try uh, to mostly go on the electric motor, uh, at least while there's sunlight. Uh, and um, I got these all set up to um, to um, uh, action groups. Uh, the main motor is um, custom one. Uh, the gasoline motor is custom two, and the backup motor is custom three. Let me check, make sure that all, both sides are engaged, because sometimes it'll drop a side. All right, that looks good. Custom two. Looks good. That's good. Okay. Uh, and it's entirely possible it could simply just flop over when I try to launch it. Uh, we don't know, so let's go ahead and try. Uh, first, first um, attempt is going to be unmanned because I just want to see what the balance of it of it is. Uh, so, with some trepidation and fear that it's going to crash the program, uh, let's launch. Okay, let's wait for the physics to kick in. Uh, if it ever does kick in. Hello physics. Uh, pitch back up again. Okay. <laughs> Let's fire up the motor, shall we? A little too buoyant. A little bit tail heavy. I uh, wonder whether it's worthwhile to even try to um, get this going. Well, maybe I can simplify it a little bit and deal with some of the lag. Definitely a little too he tail heavy. And very laggy. Extremely laggy. Alright, well this is a good, a good, good test run. Uh, I'm going to need to pull some, some of my extraneous details off here in order to get this to work. Okay, I made some changes. I simplified the tail structure. got rid of that um, complicated tail and... Uh, whoa, what the hell? Well, okay. That was good. Okay, well, that, that simplified the tail structure even more. Yeah. Oh, the humanity. Okay. Well, obviously, it's still a bit tail heavy. Uh. Okay, the tail for some reason spontaneously just self-destructed. Uh, but, um, yeah. Now it's a bit nose-heavy. Alright, back to the drawing board. Okay, here we go again. 
waiting for physics to kick in. Okay. Okay. Fairly intact so far. Okay. Up. Still some serious balance issues. Okay, this is the DZ-1. Uh, try to go something much simpler uh, this time. Uh, I'm still going with the uh, two different kinds of uh, propulsion. Um, I would go with all electric to, for the fact that uh, I want to experiment with using uh, fuel as ballast um, to you know, move around and to uh, adjust your trim. Um, so I'll, I'll run the uh, gas engines at least for a bit to um, empty these tanks out some so I can uh, experiment with using that to uh, adjust the uh, trim of the air airship. Um, but I wanted to, to mainly go with the um, electric because, um, uh, you know, it doesn't use fuel. Yeah. Okay. And it crashed. Okay, we managed to get out to the airfield this time. That's always good. Uh, and we haven't exploded upon the moment of the physics kicking in, so that's also good. A little, uh, little buoyancy. more buoyancy and I didn't set up the action group so I'll just have to do this manually hey, come on uh, activate meh come on I saw Shit. Activate. Give it a little thrust. A bit more buoyancy. Bit more buoyancy. A uh, bit more. bit more 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 yep more some more 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 Okay, in a year now. Oh, why? Well, that's going backwards, I think. Okay, simply not enough buoyancy to um, get this thing off the ground. what it appears to be yep simply not enough airship to get the thing off the ground oh I, I stand corrected I don't know why this this is reading the way it is but uh, whatever that's real real uh, wobbly a uh, bit of a uh,
I need a bit more weight toward the nose. Okay, I adjusted the weight a little bit uh, and also reinforced the tail a bit because it was looking very, very wobbly. Very, very wobbly. Okay. Need some buoyancy. Okay. That's good. Oh. Okay, 47 not quite enough. 48, there we go. Okay. And I forgot to set up the action groups again, so I'll just have to do this manually. Okay. Little throttle. All I'm really trying to do here is to get some of the fuel out of these tanks so I can use them to adjust my trim. Uh, looks uh, pretty well balanced. I want a, a notch more buoyancy than that. Uh, more than that. I'm just kind of levitating here. I should be able to use uh, aerodynamic forces to some degree to push myself up, right? I need more throttle to do that. Might need more control surface too. Yeah, I need uh, I need some extra control surfaces on that. We'll do that in a bit. Because uh, ideally, we're actually sort of looking for um, uh, more or less neutral buoyancy. Uh, I don't know how this managed to run without using any fuel, but I guess it's just using too little to uh, count. Uh, intake air. I need to put some. I need to put some air, air intakes on that. Okay. Oh yeah, it's showing. I'm using uh, a very tiny amount of fuel. Okay. Let's uh, let's do do some maneuvers. See if how maneuverable it is. Not really. Not very. Sort of unmaneuverable. Okay, well we've gotten airborne. That's a, a step in the right direction. Uh, we've got a lot more we need to do as far as um, making this thing... Well, it's not too bad as far as... Well, yeah, it is. It, it, it is. In fact, it is bad. Uh, okay, back to the drawing board. Okay, this time we have victims, I mean pilots, to uh, go along for the ride. Let's go ahead and... Uh, nope, not Jebediah and Bob. Uh, not that, not that, not that, not these, this one, okay. So, uh, give it a little gas, oops, unlock the brakes, give it a little gas. Let's head over there, guys. Charlie, Lodtop, and Raywell. Come on. Up you go. Come on. Get a move on, guys. You got a date. You got a date with something. Life, death, something. You know.
Okay. Okay, Charlie Kerman, come on down. Yep. You're going to be the rudder man, Charlie. Come on, move it. Okay, on um, um, your old school type uh, airships, um, uh, there were a couple of uh, sort of very senior officers um, that were uh, on the bridge crew. Uh, that the rudder man was was one. Uh, the elevator man was uh, often the most uh, senior guy who was going to become, uh, you know, captain of some sort someday. And he he controlled the. Um, the pitch of the airship. Uh, unfortunately, he can't control the pitch of himself here. Come on. Still a bit of lag. And the ship, is, the airship, is sort of bobbing up and down rather precariously, not unlike real airships. Okay, I'm gonna make you the elevator man. Uh, and he was uh, the elevator man. Typically, was uh, eh, come on, uh, standing this way because um, uh, that way he could best sense the um, pitch of the of the craft. Okay. And Lodtop, you're going to be our captain. Captain Lodtop. Well, he didn't crumple into a pile when he dropped off the uh, the uh, launch pad bus, so that's always a good thing. A sign that he's he's the uh, guy in charge. Yeah. Okay. Captain Lodtop. You're going to take this position over here. This thing is bobbing around like crazy. Again, not, not unlike real blimps and airships. Oh. Stand up. Okay. Now we got to switch control over to the airship itself. Okay, here we go. And let's get some buoyancy going. I think it was about 48 last time. Let's let that kind of balance out a bit. Let's give it a 49. Or maybe a 50. Come on. There we go. Let's retract our ladder. Uh, let's retract our ladder. 
Thank you very much. And we're off. Okay. I did manage to set up the um, uh, the um, action groups this time. Uh, number two turns on those engines, so hopefully it will turn on both of them. Yes, it will. We're just going to run these until we um, reduce our fuel a little bit. That'll give us some uh, uh, some leeway to use these as um, ballast tanks. Okay, I've added a bunch more control surfaces here. Let's see how that affects the uh, steerability. Uh, much better. Uh, well, actually, not that much better. But some better. A bit better. <laughs> okay, we'll head over to the uh, the island over here for our test flight. Yeah, it's not a very fast turning aircraft. Intake air for some reason still not that great. Whoa. Now right, we're getting a little bulky here. Uh, let's uh, transfer what little fuel we can over here. Not that's going to make much difference at this point. A little bit uh, tail heavy, but uh, we'll sort that out once we get some of this fuel burned off. Yeah, crank up the throttle a little bit. And we're off. Guess we need to get going faster before these uh, control services are going to do much as far as getting us uh, onto a course. Here we go. Yeah, we're going. We're good. Oh, that's kind of bulky. What are we doing here? Okay, at some point once we um, uh, let's crank up the throttle a little bit. Once we get um, uh, enough uh, fuel sucked out of these tanks to uh, allow us to to use it as balanced a little bit better, we're gonna shut these engines off and go with the electric engines. Okay, the control services are starting to bite a little bit better. How you feeling, guys? Feeling positive? I probably need to put two electric engines on this because uh, right now I'm, I'm full throttle on the gas engines and I'm not going that fast. Of course, airships were not, generally speaking, all that speedy. I mean, they weren't like, uh, not like jets or something. So. We need a bit more weight on the nose, I think. I'll go ahead and kick in the uh, electric engines too. Yeah, it's really kicking up nose up now. Whoa. Okay, nose down there, buddy. Yeah, I need to put some more weight on the nose. 
as we're, we're climbing. And uh, sometimes this, this would happen too, which is um, for whatever reason, uh, you drop a, uh, more ballast than what you um, really probably should have, uh, and um, you start climbing uncontrollably, and then you reach your burst high altitude, and your your gas bags burst, and then you fall rather precipitously. Uh, so this is also something that would happen uh, on airships. No, what of what reason? What of one thousand? Why they were rather dangerous to fly. All right, let's go ahead and uh, crank down the buoyancy a bit because we're getting much more altitude than what I would hope for. Yep, we're climbing. All right, a little bit less buoyancy, please. Less buoyancy, please. Okay, we just crashed. <laughs> 